SNC Vista SD underground distribution switchgear operates at high voltage. Failure to observe the precautions below will result in serious personal injury or death. Some of these precautions may differ from company operating procedures and rules. Where a discrepancy exists, users should follow their company's operating procedures and rules. This video is intended to be used in conjunction with the written instruction sheet included with your product. Pad-mounted style Vista SD switchgear is fastened to a wood skid. You'll need access to the inside of the enclosure to remove the skid. We'll explain how to open the enclosure doors in the section Access to Interior. Remove all packing materials from the outside of the pad-mounted enclosure. Examine the shipment for external evidence of damage as soon after receipt as possible. Once removed from the skid, use 6-foot or 183-centimeter lifting slings of equal length to lift the switchgear. For two-way and three-way switchgear assemblies, lifting slings of 4 feet or 122 centimeters are acceptable. Attach the lifting slings to the lifting tabs. Arrange the slings to distribute weight evenly and avoid sudden starts and stops when lifting. Refer to the catalog dimensional drawing to verify the switchgear is positioned correctly and is properly aligned with the anchor bolts or flush anchors. Level the switchgear using metal shims as required between the mounting pad and the enclosure. Insert a pentahead socket wrench or tool into the hinged roof latching mechanism. Rotate the wrench or tool 360 degrees counterclockwise to unlatch the hinged roof. Do not use undue force, which may damage the locking mechanism. If optional key interlocks are provided, make sure the interlocks are in the correct position to allow door opening. Lift the hinged roof to approximately a 45 degree angle. The hold open mechanism will engage automatically. Test the hold open mechanism by slowly releasing your grip on the hinged roof before doing work inside the enclosure. To access the termination compartment, lift the latch handle to open the right hand door or the center door. Open the door far enough to permit the door holder mechanism to engage. Five and six way switchgear will have three doors. The right and center door will have a lift latch and the left will have a finger latch. Make sure the hinged roof and all doors open and latch without binding. Binding indicates enclosure distortion that should be corrected by additional shimming. Then, secure the enclosure to the pad using the anchor brackets provided. With the switchgear installed on the pad, make the cable connections. First, remove the cover panels by unscrewing the connecting pins. Lift the front of each panel up and pull outward to disengage the tab at the back of the panel from the slot at the bottom of the operating mechanism. If you will be pulling cables, the hinged roof can be placed in a more vertical position to allow better access to the switchgear. You will need two people to lift the roof, which should be done before the roof counterweights are installed. While pushing up slightly on the hinged roof, release the latches on the hold open mechanism on both sides of the switchgear. Lift the hinged roof to the second, more vertical position. The hold open mechanism will automatically engage. Before energizing the switchgear, replace the shipping covers on all bushings and bushing wells with elbows or insulated protective covers or caps. Failure to replace the shipping covers on all bushings with elbows or insulated protective covers or caps can result in a flashover and serious personal injury or death. 
Install the cable support brackets in accordance with the appropriate reference drawing included in the installation and operation information kit that came with your switchgear. Now, terminate the cables with separable insulated connectors following the manufacturer's instructions. The enclosure includes a counterweight mechanism to assist the hold open mechanism. This counterweight mechanism is shipped partially disassembled. If the roof was previously raised to the second most vertical position for cabling, return it to the 45 degree position. On the right hand side of the enclosure, while pushing up on the hinged roof, release the latch on the hold open mechanism. Allow the hinged roof to sag against the hold open mechanism. At the other end of the enclosure, push up on the hinged roof just enough to allow the other latch to be released. Lower the hinged roof to the 45 degree position. With the roof lowered, we can now connect the counterweights. Remove the shipping materials surrounding the counterweight mechanisms at both ends of the enclosure. Cut the plastic cable ties holding the longer lever arms in the down position. At one end of the enclosure, pivot the lower lever arm up and position it to the back of the shorter upper lever arm. Align the holes and press the captive pin through the holes in both lever arms. The pin is self-securing. Repeat this on the other side of the switchgear. With the counterweights installed, we can reinstall the cover panels over each way by inserting the tab at the back of the panel into the slot at the bottom of the operating mechanism. Tighten the pins at the front of the panel. Last, ground the switchgear by connecting the grounding pads on each way to the enclosure ground pad. Then, connect the enclosure ground pad to the system ground using your standard practice. For switchgear furnished with a continuous ground bus, connect the ground bus to the enclosure ground pad. Then connect the enclosure ground pad to the system ground using your standard practice. In either case, use the equivalent of 4 aught copper in either a single or multiple connection to realize the maximum momentary rating of the switchgear assembly. For a multiple connection, cables smaller than 1 aught copper or equivalent should not be used. Finally, connect the cable concentric neutral wires to the grounding system as appropriate. You may install your own fault indicators on the switchgear. SNC has optional mounting brackets for fault indicators available. Mount the fault indicators on the mounting brackets and attach the associated sensors to the cables below the cable terminations. Secure your switchgear by closing the doors and the hinged roof. To close the doors, lift the door holder mechanism to allow the left hand door to swing closed. Make sure the finger latch engages the pin. Lift the door holder up to allow the right hand or center door to swing closed. Make sure the latch handle drops down and fully engages the latching mechanism. To close the roof, on the right hand side of the enclosure, while pushing up on the hinged roof, release the latch on the hold open mechanism. Allow the roof to sag against the right hand hold open mechanism. At the other end of the enclosure, push up on the hinged roof just enough to allow the left hand hold open mechanism latch to be released. Lower the hinged roof until it is fully closed. Insert a pentahead socket wrench or tool into the hinged roof latching mechanism. Rotate the wrench or tool 360 degrees clockwise to fully latch the hinged roof. Before walking away, 
Secure the switchgear by inserting a padlock through the hole in the padlock recess. Lock the padlock. A resilient closed cell gasket on the bottom flange of the enclosure protects the finish from being scratched during installation and isolates it from the alkalinity of a concrete foundation. This gasket also helps to seal the enclosure to the foundation, to guard against entry of rodents, insects, or weeds, and to discourage tampering. In the event the gasket cannot compensate for an uneven foundation, grout the bottom of the enclosure as necessary. Any grout applied should be recessed enough to permit caulking. To complete the installation, caulk around the bottom of the enclosure. A weatherproof, temperature vulcanizing silicon rubber compound is recommended. Apply a suitable compound to fill the spaces between the cable and the conduit and cap all empty conduits to prevent the entry of moisture and rodents. With the installation complete, wipe down the exterior of the enclosure with a clean, damp cloth. Refinish any scratches or abrasions with SNC Touch-Up Finish Red Oxide Primer. Order catalog number 9999058 for olive green finish, 9999080 for light gray finish, and 9999061 for Red Oxide Primer. No other finish or primer is approved. The area to be touched up should be cleaned to remove all oil and grease. Sand the area to remove any traces of rust that may be present and make sure all edges are feathered before applying primer. Refer to the operating instruction sheet for information on closing the ways and testing the switchgear. We hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please visit our website at snc.com.